I have officially survived 1,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. We've had small accomplishments, such as making our first wooden pickaxe or mining our first diamond, but we've also achieved the unthinkable, such as raiding 100 ancient cities and getting tons of loot, and even collecting every single new armor set in Minecraft 1.20. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy as we survive 1,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. In today's video, we create the ultimate zoo containing every passive mob in hardcore Minecraft. This huge project took over 400 days and nearly 100 hours of footage to complete, so I hope you enjoy. The only issue is, I don't have a single Minecraft world at all. Oh, this is much better. Okay, so looking around, there is this big island totally surrounded by water, and I think this would be a great location for our zoo. The only issue is, I have no items. So, let's get ourselves some resources. Nice. Perfect. This is much better. This is pretty much my version of a speedrunning fully enchanted diamond armor and tools in Minecraft. So, let's talk about my plan for this episode, and also talk about why I don't have any Minecraft worlds. Well, except for this one. A couple of months ago, I made a video talking about how my cat deleted my hardcore world, and no, that's not a joke. And unfortunately, if you were following along with my channel, you also noticed that for a while, I was hacked. YouTube is still running an investigation, but somehow I got this virus on my computer and they hacked my YouTube channel. Unfortunately, when I factory reset my computer to get rid of the virus, I also lost all of my Minecraft worlds. But I love hardcore Minecraft too much and I couldn't give it up. So I decided to just start a new series with a bang and get fully enchanted diamond armor and tools pretty quick so that we can just get into the fun build projects. Because today we're going to build an awesome zoo with room for every single animal mob inside of Minecraft. And I think this little island is the perfect place to do it. It's kind of frustrating because I've gotten really good at surviving in hardcore. I don't even die, that's not how I lose my worlds. I get a cat deleting my worlds, or I get a hacker. So, hopefully the next time I lose a hardcore world, it's it's due to an actual death in the game. So, I, uh, I don't exactly have a lot of materials to build this zoo. So, the first thing we're going to do is flatten out this entire island. Not only is it going to give us our room to build the zoo, but uh, we'll hopefully get a decent amount of resources from it. Okay, and there we go. This was actually uh, a lot more involved than I thought. It took many hours having to get mending on my tools, but uh, it was worth it because now we have this giant island to work with. So, thankfully we've got a lot of animals already here. We've got sheep, chickens, pigs, cows, and even horses. So, let's start off by making a place for these mobs. Okay, so I'm doing a bit of experimenting with how I want this zoo to look, but I thought I would start off with the chickens and make them a chicken coop, because that was pretty easy. As for the decor, this isn't permanent. I was messing around with how different heights of trees would look, different bushes, if I spawn naturally spawning trees. We'll do that all towards the end, but I'm just trying to see what kind of vibe I want for this. But I think this is a fun little chicken coop. Let's move on to the pigs. Okay, and then for the pig pen, I went for more of like a rugged, messed up look because, you know, pigs like mud and pigs are messy, but I like how this looks. I think pretty consistently in every pen, I'm going to try to give them like a food and or water source to make it a bit more realistic. So here I added hay, and I'm also having to work around the blocks a little bit by adding slabs and such, just to make sure the pigs can't jump up and jump out. So uh, I'll think about that. I can just move this here. But yeah, I think this is pretty cute. I'm going to try my best to make each individual animal's pen look unique so that they're not just copycats of each other. And I want to stick to the theme of the animal, you know, like pigs play in mud and are messy, chickens have chicken coops. I don't know what I'm going to do for Mr. Sheep over here. Alright, the cows and sheep have a nice place to live, but we have a problem. To finish off the first round of mobs, I wanted to make a little place for the horses, the only issue is... It's so early in this world, I don't have a saddle. Thankfully though, I do have leads from killing a wandering villager, so I think I can still put a lead on one of these horses and drag them to where I want them to be. Okay, luck. Ah, perfect. So I don't even need to tame them, it still works. Actually, 
I can tame them anyways, right? I just, yeah. I just uh, can't ride them. I don't have a saddle. So this will work out. Okay, here we go. I think these horse stables are pretty fun. I'm definitely going to tame these guys once I get a saddle. So if you have any fun name suggestions for them, either this gray one or this white spotted black one, let me know down in the comments below some good names. But yeah, I also decided to leave an extra stable open. This will either house some llamas either we'll get from mountains or a wandering trader, or maybe even a camel from the newest update whenever that comes out. So, we have the first easy mobs done. Sheep, cows, chickens, pigs, and horses. The only downside is now it's time for the more difficult mobs. Instead of gathering all the mobs at once, I think what I want to do is get one mob at a time, bring it back here, build the enclosure, and then we'll move on to the next mob. So, I actually have an idea. I see some wolves on the other side of the river here. Can I take wolves how they are and use leads, or do I have to tame them? Oh, this is perfect! Look, I can get actual wolves! So no, we won't just have dogs in our zoo, but we'll have actual wild wolves. That's pretty cool. Let's build you guys a little enclosure. All right, and here we have the wolf enclosure. I think this is really cool. I tried to give them a little cave to live in. We gave them some water and also put some spruce trees to emulate the biome. I'm a fan of it. As for the rest of the zoo, I've started to get the feel I want for it. I added a pond temporarily in this little area where there was nothing. I might add something else here, I'm not sure. But we added some trees, some decor, some light posts, and I'm really liking how this whole thing is starting to come out. Obviously some parts of it, like the stable, look really weird because it's just in the middle of a big green grass plains. But I think once we fill up this island, it's going to look really cool. And uh, we definitely will have enough room. I was worried about not having enough room. But now, it is time to move on to the best mob in Minecraft. The frog. Listen, listen, I just, lo I just love Minecraft frogs so much. They're so derpy, they're so cute, they're so fun. How could you not like them? Now, obviously Minecraft frogs, there's an issue. Frogs in Minecraft can jump up to 15 blocks, which means I can't just put them in a normal enclosure like this. I've decided we're actually going to make a mangrove swamp terrarium. So we're going to find a mangrove swamp, gather blocks that emulate the biome, make a smaller version of the biome, and then cover it in glass. I think it'll look really cool in the end. Ah, here we go. I finally, finally found one. Now, if you didn't know, there's actually different colored frogs depending on the biome. So, on our way back, I'm only going to bring this one, but we'll see if we can find a different color frog. Well, just in case, let's bring two gray ones. We can get the orange colored frog from temperate biomes, and then from really cold biomes, we can get the green frog. I want to give a quick shout out to a friend. I actually want to give a quick shout out to a friend. I wasn't sure what kind of design to use for these frogs, and so I needed to look at other people's farms for inspiration, and I saw Tootsie's video on She Made a Zoo, and I really liked how her frog container looked. So, big shout out to her. We've actually recorded videos before, and she shouted me out in her zoo video, so I only found it fitting for me to shout her out in mine. I'm just trying to build my frog enclosure, and and this man is trying to mess me up. Um, he doesn't have any good trades, so uh, no, no, no. These guys, these guys, you're gonna be mad at me, but let's take you, and you're gonna you're gonna be a permanent member of our zoo now. You're gonna have a brand new home, buddy. Okay, he'll eventually stop being mad at me. As for you, I'm sorry, buddy. You've got to go. So there we go. All right, and here we have the frog enclosure. I've pretty much tried to emulate a mangrove swamp inside of here. We have our two little froggies, and of course, we made them breed using slime balls, and we have some tadpoles pretty soon, so those will be absolutely adorable. I made a mangrove tree right in the middle here, and if you could tell from the outside, I tried to make it look like this was almost like a bottled up terrarium. I kind of like how it looks. It's pretty fun. Before we continue, I'm gonna, uh, mine some quartz to repair my shovel. So, I think we're gonna do a little bit of a two-in-one. Right on the other side of that mountain there is some snowy peaks, as well as this meadow biome. That means we can get both bees and goats. Bees we can easily get with a campfire and a silk touch pickaxe, and goats we can easily get with leads. But before we grab them, let's make them a place to live. Okay, now with the bees and the goats finished, I think the next mob we should go for is definitely the Mooshrew. Now, the only issue is this world is fairly new. This is the only thing we've done in this world, just work on this zoo. 
So, I have an idea that'll help us search for the Mushroom. So if you guys didn't know, there's this really awesome website you can use called Chunkbase. And basically, they have this feature called the Seed Map. All you have to do is implement your Minecraft seed, and it'll show you your entire world, with this compass right here in the middle being the spawn point. So, what you can do is type in your current coordinates, which is right here. This is where we are. This island is our zoo island. So from here, we can tell the game to highlight certain biomes. And all we have to do is go through the biome list and look for the biome we want, which of course are the mushroom biomes. And fortunately enough, it looks like the nearest mushroom biome isn't too far away. It's right over here. This is just about a thousand and a half blocks away, which really isn't that bad. But that's still a pretty far distance. So how can we quickly get there? Well, what we can do is head into our nether portal and then create another nether portal closer to where we need to be. If you're newer to Minecraft and you don't know, for every block you travel in the nether, you travel eight blocks in the overworld, making it so that traveling far distances is much faster in the nether. So I'll only have to travel a few hundred blocks using this method. Uh-oh. I, uh, I forgot you need to bring, uh, gold armor. I'm just gonna... Don't mind if I do. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. So one of the other mobs we actually need is the hoglin, so I'm gonna let these hoglins live for now. The only issue is I don't have an elytra yet. I mean, thankfully it's not too hard to get pretty decent armor and weapons, but an elytra would be nice. Oh, there's our buddy the strider. We'll also be getting one of you in a little bit. If we simply make our portal right on that little island there, we should be in a mushroom biome. And then I can just use my leads and we just have to grab these mushrooms and take them all the way to the overworld, which means I'm gonna need to make some staircases. But honestly, this wasn't too far. So I'm gonna make my portal right here, and if I did the math right, we should be at, or at least close to, a mushroom biome. Uh, maybe? Ooh, I really should have brought myself a shield. Let's just break this, I don't need it, I'm sorry, buddy. Oh. Well, we're near water, so that's a good sign, I guess. <gasps> hey, and there we are, um... I'm not sure how I'm going to get my mushroom through the water to my portal. Instead, I guess what I'm going to have to do is just dig down underground and make an underground tunnel to my portal. It shouldn't be too hard. It'll be worth it in the end. This island looks pretty small. Hopefully, we have a mushroom. If not, there are some more islands close by. Unfortunately, there are uh, no mushrooms on here. But there is a pretty big mushroom island over there, as well as a few smaller ones up there. So, we can check those out. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. We have our little mushroom buddies, so we'll collect two of them, and then I'll also collect some mycelium while we're here. And some mushroom blocks. So this is what I did for the mushroom farm. I'm a fan of it, even though it's pretty simple. We just have the big mushrooms, and then we have mycelium. Now, I ran out of mycelium, so what I did was I just placed dirt down, and the mycelium should spread to the dirt, covering this whole thing in mycelium. Once that's done, I'll place more smaller mushrooms around to finish off decorating this, but for now, I think the cows look pretty cute. Next, why don't we actually get our little nether buddies? I think what I'm gonna do is go into the nether and collect a lot of crimson and nether related blocks. From there, we can create a little nether habitat where we can have crimson trees, crimson blocks, and nether blocks, but also we can have a zoglin and a strider. Unfortunately, we can't have an actual hoglin because once they're in the overworld, they start to shake and they turn into a zombified hoglin, but we can try our best. I still think hoglins are pretty cute even if they do want to attack me all the time. So our first trip will just be gathering the blocks we need, and then we will make a second trip, and that trip will then be getting the mobs. I want to make sure I have their pen ready so that I can have the hoglin chase me down, and then I can trap him at the right moment. Okay, well, I feel a little bit dumb. I created this new nether portal because I thought it would be such a far journey to get zoglins into this little pen. Turns out you can use your leads on them. I decided to try. I had no idea you could do that, so I feel kind of dumb for not knowing that. However, it will be hard to get a strider inside of here. The strider will probably be difficult, but I made him a little lava pool so that he doesn't pass out. Looks like these guys really want to attack me. They're really mad. I brought them here. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Thankfully, striders are actually pretty easy to track down. So what I did was I made a pathway or a little staircase, I should say, directly up to my portal, and I know striders occasionally need lava, so what I did was I brought a lava bucket with me, and if he's ever, if, you know, if he's ever lonely, if he ever needs lava, I can just give it to him really fast. Uh, he didn't seem to like that too much, I'm sorry, buddy, but I think we should be able to fit up here. Uh-oh, he's gonna, okay, I just have to mine this block above me. Uh, hopefully I don't die. 
<laughs> I have golden apples if I need to. Okay, see? This is working. Look! We're doing it. This is all I need to do. We just need to go up this uh, this entire staircase. I think it rounds a bend here. And, yeah. As long as we don't die of fall damage, or not fall damage, as long as we don't die of suffocation, we'll be good. Okay, we can do it. Come on. We're almost there. Come on. Go through the portal. Can we not go through the portal together? Okay, he went through. Okay, come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, you can do it. Don't die on me now. Yes, we did it. We got it. No, no, don't fight. No, 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 don't. Oh, gosh. This isn't good. Let me let me get a golden apple. This is not what I wanted. Are you just going to chill in the lava? Okay, I won't I won't kill anyone, but uh, let's let's just build up here. Okay, we did it. That was a... Uh, that was a little hectic, but uh, why are you why are you outside of the lava, dude? Go go in the lava. Go in the lava. Why is he not in the lava? Go 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 go. Stay there. Oh, he wants my stick. Okay, go go. Okay, well if he wants to stay outside of the lava, he can do that on his own time, I guess. Oh shoot. I think the Zoglin is hurting him. Do we have to separate the two? I think they might have to be separated. I had no idea. Okay, I added some crimson fences and I think this is a good solution. These Zoglins will continuously be trying to attack the Strider, but at least they're separated. So this is more like two separate pens instead of one. At least, at least they're occupied and they'll stay busy. I had no idea these two disliked each other. I've never seen them interact, but hopefully Mr. Strider is nice and safe now. It is now time to get some difficult, but also pretty fun mobs. So by going to the jungle biome, which hopefully has a bamboo forest, we can knock off parrots, pandas, and also ocelots. Now parrots we can tame with seeds, pandas we can take back with a boat, and then I'm pretty sure ocelots you can use a lead on. In the old version of Minecraft, ocelots used to be tamed from jungles and then you could turn them into cats, but nowadays ocelots just stay ocelots. So I want to see if I can have all three in the same pen together. We can make the area for them sort of just like a smaller version of a jungle biome. So while we're there, we'll also collect some fun blocks. Okay, so within the bamboo forests like this, we should be looking for pandas and hey, we also got ourselves some parrot friends already. <gasps> no, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. Okay, we got one. Should we get two? Nah, I'm gonna leave you. You can stay here. I'm gonna try to get different colors of parrots. Now, I believe parrots and ocelots both will spawn in any jungle biome. The difficulty is going to be, I think ocelots are pretty rare, and I also am not sure if the parrots will follow us over the ocean. Even if you tame a pet in Minecraft, if you go too far away from it, it won't always teleport to you, and so if we have super long stretches of ocean, we might have to make some stops along the way. Okay, I've got some parrots along with me, but uh... I've got my hitboxes turned on to find ocelots, and I didn't expect the ocelots to, uh, spawn on top of a tree. Let's see if we can get him to lead on you. <gasps> oh, yes! Okay, look at him! Oh, he's so cute! You're gonna be my new best friend, because I don't have any friends. With the parrots and the ocelot down, we're ready to find a panda. As for the gray parrot we just tamed, unfortunately, a, uh, a creeper blew him up. We will avenge him one of these days. Hello? Look at this little guy. Okay, if I do this... Yeah? You'll, uh, you'll go in? Maybe? Are you a little scared? Okay. And then I ride with him? And look at us! We got it! Now I just have to go back and get the ocelot. <gasps> no! I'm so sorry! I didn't mean to hit you! I was trying to break the bamboo in front of me! Oh, this is an issue. But anyways, I need to grab my ocelot because I left him in a hole so that he, uh, wouldn't run away. Two thousand years later. Alright, well, it took me a while to get them all here, but... Let's build all these guys a nice little jungle home. Well, here we are with the finalized jungle area. Honestly, the only comment I have on this is the amount of bone meal I've been going through and the amount of composters I've been using is disgusting. But hey, at least they have a fun little place to live. So, with all of this room left, but not a lot of mobs, I think what would be good to put on this side of the island is maybe like an entrance to the zoo. So we can have a nice entrance archway, the whole thing will still be surrounded by trees, and then we'll also have bridges leading to the mainland. I just need something to fill up all this space. But overall, I think the zoo's really coming along. I really like how it looks so far. Okay, so the next mob is one you might not even consider, and that is the bat. And so we can't put a lead on a bat, can't breed a bat, 
So all we can do is make the bat habitat, and then underground at a certain Y level we can create an artificial cave, and get a bat to spawn, and then slowly block up the cave, forcing the bat into the cave. So let's see how it works. Okay, so basically what we've got here is just a little cave, and then I'll decorate it inside depending on the bat we get. I think I just want to wait for the bat and see what sort of vibe we get once it's completed. But this is the cave, I have it glassed off, and I have a little staircase in the back where we will eventually wait for a bat to spawn, and then trap it inside of here whenever we get one. So, I think we're forgetting about one mob. The mob I wasn't sure about is the fox. I could do a normal fox or the arctic fox, but there's one problem. Foxes like frogs can jump very high but i didn't want to put the foxes in a glass terrarium because i thought that would look a little weird and i am also a little scared to put the foxes in here because if they do happen to get out somehow i don't want them killing any of my other mobs so we're going to save the foxes for when we eventually do a monster slash hostile mob zoo this one is just pretty much for passive mobs even though the uh even though the zoglin is uh is pretty hostile where is he I think he despawned. Well, maybe we have to get another one. And this time we'll put a name tag on it. So basically what the plan is now is for this entire front area, we're going to wall off what's the zoo and what's the entrance. And we're going to make a bit of an entryway to this zoo. I'm super proud of where we've gotten so far because I think it looks awesome. And so far it's only taken 383 Minecraft days. To complete the actual building didn't take too long just all of the resource gathering and streaming i've done really takes a lot of time so let's get this place finished up well uh i'm entirely out of resources so i guess we're just gonna spend our time collecting some okay well we've got all our materials we've got the trees spaced out we've got this island reshaped a bit let's make an entrance to this zoo Well, after 421 days and 40 hours of footage, we are finally completed with the zoo. So I've added this bridge here and I decided to add it high up because I like how it sort of looks down on the zoo going into it. We have this nice big grand entrance and then going through it takes you to the completed zoo. Now, I'd like to briefly apologize that this project took so long to come out. Since it is a brand new world, everything from mining to get materials to making villager breeders and trading halls for name tags and mending books, all of it took a really long time. But I really just wanted to start this world with a bang, and I also wanted to include mostly some of the fun stuff. I'm also recording this after making most of the video, and I realized that because there was so much footage, I did lose some of the replay footage, as well as some of the recording footage, and so stuff looks out of order or maybe missing some stuff i uh i pray you excuse me but besides that besides the little hiccups i thought this project was super fun and overall super successful i think not only does this zoo look great but it was absolutely so fun to make so i hope you all enjoyed today's video if you did please consider leaving a like and subscribing in the channel it really does help me out for putting all this work into these videos but i really hope you guys have a good day and i will see you guys all in the next video i feel like i'm going to explode we spent 420 minecraft days making this zoo and we did it all without an elytra I guess I really just like torturing myself. But what's even more embarrassing is we made it these 420 days without a starter house. So we built one on stream. But I think it's about time we end all of this self-humiliation and just finally get ourselves an Elytra 437 days into this world. And along with that, why don't we create ourselves a giant rocket farm with a sugarcane farm and a creeper farm inside so we have an unlimited supply of rockets. Okay, so basically the plan is to do everything we need to do to defeat the Ender Dragon, beat the Ender Dragon, get ourselves an Elytra, and then create a awesome firework rocket factory. After making this massive zoo in the last episode, we pretty much have no materials, and so having an Elytra will make it a lot easier for us to fly around and get new materials. Also, some of the build projects I want to take on soon are a giant aquarium with all the aquatic mobs in Minecraft, as well as another zoo with all of the hostile mobs in Minecraft. That way, we will have every single animal and mob trapped in the game. So, here's our checklist. I'm looking for Endermen so that we can get Ender Pearls, and then we have to take down some Blazes for some Blaze Rods. Once we have those two things, we can craft some Eyes of Ender, and then we are going to wait a few in-game days so that we can get some Phantoms to spawn. Phantom Membranes will allow us to create slow-falling potions just to make sure that, uh, 
we don't die during the dragon fight. And then with all of that, we should be ready and set to defeat the dragon. Also, since this world is new, I'm still looking for good names that we can name our world. So if you have any cool name suggestions, uh, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, why not uh, give the video a like? Nice. I haven't even used a bow before. Okay, so I'm in the warped forest right now because if you've played Minecraft for a while, you probably know that warped forests have a much higher spawn rate for endermen. Ah, some victims. I mean, uh, friends. When going to the stronghold for the first time, I like to have a little over 12 eyes of ender. 12 is the perfect amount to fit in the portal in case the portal doesn't have any of its own. And then I also like a few to actually help me find the stronghold. Oh, duh. There's a nether fortress right here. Okay, we've got enough ender pearls, so let's get some blaze powder. There's so many wither skeletons. What the heck? <gasps> uh oh. This is not good. This is not good. Oh gosh, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. It doesn't matter that I've played Minecraft for 13 years. Every time I enter a nether fortress, it's. It's terrifying. Ooh, but at least we got some good loot. Oh, I also do need some of this because we need to craft some slow falling potions. I guess I could just bring a water bucket with me and hope that I can land an MLG water bucket, but I don't want to take any chances. Okay, this should be enough. So, we got the blaze powder, and here are our eyes of ender. Okay, I haven't slept in a while, so hopefully some phantoms spawn, but let's get this set up. Okay, now we wait. Okay, we've got our slow falling potions and then one piece of redstone dust to extend the whole thing, and we should be all set to fight the dragon. Here we go. Sweet. Okay, I'm also bringing some cobblestone and a water bucket with me just to help me scale the towers and whatnot, but let's see what direction the stronghold is in. Okay, we need to go past the zoo. Okay, let's try this now. Okay, here we go. We're at the stronghold. Uh, it just went underwater. I wish I had water breathing potions. So the stronghold is underwater, but not the usual underwater strongholds where, uh, oh, let's grab this. Not the usual underwater strongholds where you can see it, but it's actually, like, deep under the water. Well, I guess all we can do is dig down. Okay, we're pretty low with our Y level, so where's the stronghold? Oh, oh. I think we're here. <gasps> yes! Okay, we found it. These chests don't really have too many good items in them. Oh, that was easy. I've never seen a portal room like this with an entrance here, but also an entire room off to the side. This is... this is new for me. Okay. I guess let's go defeat the dragon. Okay, let's see how long it takes us to defeat the dragon. It'll honestly probably be pretty quick. I've gotten good at this now. And there we go. No matter how low I have my game volume, the dragon fight is always so loud. <laughs> but oh, this XP will be nice because we can finally get ourselves some good armor and weapons. Well, better armor and weapons. Let's take this torch. And we place it two blocks underneath the egg, and boom, there we go. Here is our portal. Here it is. Okay, with our render distance up all the way, I don't think I see an end city in the distance at all. So, let's try to find one. Okay, one right over there. The only issue is, how do we get there? Try it. Ooh, I made it. Okay, fingers crossed this end city has a ship, but I don't think it does. Well, there's no ship and it's pretty tiny. I honestly don't know if this will even have any loot, but I will still collect the shulkers. I like to keep an ender chest with some shulker boxes inside just to help carry around all my valuable resources in the world. Okay, let's see. Uh, blast protection, unbreaking, mending, we'll take that. The helmet I don't really need. And the pickaxe is good, but again, it's iron. I wish I could turn my render distance up more. 
My love, we have finally found it. Oh, finally. Thankfully, it... It didn't take too long to find. I was just hoping we would have good luck and find it a little bit sooner. Oh, and there's a portal right next to it. Our luck is unrivaled. Bro, die. Thank you. Wait, hold on. Is that another ship? Oh my gosh, that is. There's another ship right over there. Well, I guess we are going to get two elytras today. Ooh, protection three. Tons of diamonds, okay. Don't need the iron swords. And a Blast Protection Diamond Helmet. I don't really care about that. Woo! I didn't mean to fall there. Okay, let's take the Levitation Effect. Come on. Okay, maybe not. I was going to use the Levitation Effect just to get over to the ship. Oh, there we go. We grab Dragon Head. And we grab Elytra. Sweet. Okay, we'll check out this End City 2, and then I'm out of here. Uh, ooh, Mending and Protection 3. And, ooh, Protection 4 Boots! There we go, I don't even have Protection 4 Boots. I mean, we got the other Protection 3 Boots, so I could have combined them, but this makes my life easier. Alright, nothing good in the rest of the chests, so let's just grab this Elytra and head out. Alright, time to head back. Okay, there we go. And then besides our elytra, we also got some pretty good stuff. We got a decent amount of diamonds. We have another elytra, a saddle, and our ender chest. So, we have officially defeated the dragon, got ourselves an elytra, but what about the firework factory? I think I want to make it on this little area right here. So, let's flatten this out and make it suitable for our farm. Okay, so with this area flattened out, I think this is a nice sized area to make our farm. I might make it a little bit bigger, but I gotta be careful because my shovel's almost broken. Let's actually go repair this. I've got mending on it, but I don't even have an XP farm. But our plan for this is what we're going to do is first we're going to build the frame of the factory itself. And then inside of the factory, I'm going to fit a fully automatic creeper farm, as well as a fully automatic sugarcane farm to give us the ultimate combination for a firework factory. The only thing we have to do is combine the two and we'll be all set. So let's go build the frame for this factory and see what it's looking like. Okay, so for the firework factory, this is the basic design we have for the outside. Now, I will probably end it in a pixel work uh, firework rocket on the outside, as well as some other small details, but this is simply the factory to hold what we need to build. So what we're going to do is right in the middle here, we are going to create a fully automatic AFK creeper farm. And then on either side, we are going to create a giant AFK automatic sugarcane farm. So then what I'll be able to do is just AFK on the roof of this thing, and it'll give me pretty much all of the resources I need to give me unlimited fireworks. So this right here is the basic shape of the creeper farm. If you've watched me for a while, you definitely know this farm. It's just the creeper farm I always make because it's really simple to make, it requires barely any resources, and it never fails to work for me. Basically all we need for this is a few building blocks like I have here, a few pieces of carpet, some water buckets, some lava, some trap doors, and also a couple cats on each end, but I can get those easily from our village over there because the villagers have spawned tons of cats for us. So with this shape, we're going to place a trapdoor right here and also right here. And that's where the cats will sit. And then the rest, we're going to fill up the top with trapdoors right here. The trapdoors on top and the carpet on the bottom pretty much make it so that once we encase this thing in blocks to make it dark, only creepers will be able to spawn. Trapdoors make it so endermen, skeletons, and zombies can't spawn. And the carpet makes it so that spiders will not spawn. So we will only have creepers spawning in here and this farm will get us a ton of gunpowder. What's also nice about this design is once we finish this layer, we can easily just build another one directly on top of it in case I want to double my spawn rate. So from the front of the farm, we just have this. But if we go behind our building here, there's actually this little hole from where I didn't complete the platform and here is where the creepers will die. I decided to go for campfires instead of lava, but this is basically it. The campfires will kill the creepers, the drops will go in the hoppers, and then 
the drops will go in these two chests. So I'll secure this up a little bit so that we don't have any hostile mobs coming in here. The last thing I want is me collecting my drops from creepers and then creepers come to blow me up. So with that, we now have some space to create automatic sugarcane farms on either side of this. So here we go, we've got the creeper farm and then the sugarcane farms on either side. Now these things are pretty big so they should produce a decent amount of sugarcane. And so, if we AFK, we should get lots of what we need. I also definitely think I will raise this creeper farm up a few levels, because we easily have room for a few more. Now, as for the front here, I'm thinking about putting a giant pixel art firework rocket right here. So, let's go do that really fast and see how it looks. I don't have a wool farm. However, what I do have is a lot of wool from the sheep I've sheared in my sheep pen in the zoo. And then also, I should have enough dye from the flowers I collected from destroying this whole island. Because I really only need white and red and like, that's about it. I'll probably use some black wool, but I do have a black sheep in there. It should be easy. So I decided to make the firework rocket itself and realized that there are some different reds and grays in there. So instead of just using wool, why don't we use a little bit of concrete? Concrete's pretty easy because it's just gravel, sand, and the color dye you need. And both of these were pretty easy to get. Okay, concrete powder and wool. Let's see what kind of firework rocket we can make. Okay, so let's test out the Elytra. And here is also the finished farm. I actually looked at the replay footage I made and saw that the gray concrete was a big miss, so I decided to go for white concrete. I also decided to outline the whole thing in black wool to make it pop a little bit, so I changed the tail from black to red. The black on black situation didn't look too good. Oh, there we go. That is much better. I really like how it looks. We've also got these skylights in the top here just to produce a little bit of light inside of there because it got really dark with this huge ceiling. Well, there we go. A finished firework factory to give us all the firework rockets we could ever want in this world. Not only will it give us tons of sugarcane and gunpowder, but we can also use the sugarcane to be turned into paper. So then any excess we have we can use in the village or trading hall over there and trade for emeralds to have an unlimited supply of both emeralds and XP. Trading with villagers is actually a great source of XP if you have a really large trading hall. In my hardcore world on my Twitch stream, we actually harvest a big carrot farm every day and trade it and we get like tons of levels. Well, anyways guys, that is all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel because it really does mean a lot to me. But I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you guys all in the next video. I'm poor in real life and in Minecraft. Since I can't become an overnight billionaire in real life, how about we do that in Minecraft? Okay, so over here we have our newly built rocket farm, and inside of it we have an automatic sugarcane farm, but behind it we also have a fully automatic creeper farm. So hopefully from AFKing a lot, we have a lot of gunpowder. Oh yeah, this is perfect. So I think the first step to getting rich should be upgrading all of our diamond armor, tools and weapons to netherite. And the best way we can do that is by using all of our gunpowder and combining it with sand to get ourselves tons of TNT. I've got this little sandy area over here we've destroyed to get ourselves lots of glass, so let's just mine up this sand so that we can get some TNT. Okay, so let's take all of this sand and hopefully get ourselves a lot, a lot of TNT. Okay, so totally got ourselves about like six stacks of DNT, which uh, makes the inner maniac inside of me very happy. I don't care how old I get, setting off big explosions in Minecraft always makes me really happy. Although, I will admit, blowing up TNT in the nether is kind of, uh, kind of gives me bad flashbacks. The video where we got ourselves a netherite beacon, I literally spent hundreds of hours blowing up TNT in the nether. And although it was definitely worth it to get that beacon and flex on people, it uh, it, it's left me a little bit traumatized. So I guess getting to set off all this TNT is a bit of a double-edged sword. But regardless, we power through. Let's head through this nether portal and find ourselves a great spot that we can set off all of this TNT and hopefully get ourselves a ton of ancient debris and ultimately a ton of netherite. Because six stacks of TNT is definitely enough to turn all of our diamond armor, weapons, and tools into netherite. So basically we're just gonna make these massive tunnels as long as we can and then fill them up with a ton of TNT. 
blow it up and see how much netherite we get. Considering we have six stacks of TNT, I believe we should get ourselves a pretty decent amount of ancient debris. I frequently find veins of one, two, and three ancient debris, but I still have yet to find the infamous vein of four pieces of ancient debris. I've had people say they've found it before, but, but I never have. So if you found it, let me know. Now, I've heard a lot of YouTubers say, and I've had a lot of people say to me, that it's most efficient and you get the best drops if you actually look for netherite on the actual chunk borders instead of in the middle of a chunk. However, we actually tested this out on stream in multiple worlds and multiple locations in the nether, and it turns out that, at least for me, I got significantly, like significantly more netherite if I mined and blew up TNT in the middle of a chunk versus on the chunk board. I see why it makes sense that the chunk borders would give more drops, but for some reason in practice, it just didn't work out for me. So I wouldn't worry too much if you're on the chunk border or not. Okay, so this is like the final stack of TNT we have, so let's uh, set it off and hope it goes well. Okay, so total from all of our TNT, we have 57 pieces of ancient debris, which uh, I think is a pretty good amount. So let's go get it smelted and combine it with gold to get ourselves a pretty good amount of netherite. Man, I hate being colorblind because it is so hard for me to tell which blocks are ancient debris and all of this mess. So uh, I'm really hoping I didn't miss any. What's up, dude? Well, I, I actually uh, I did miss some. Okay, so I've got all my gold and then we can take this netherite scrap we've got and oh, beautiful 14 netherite ingots. There we go. So there should be, I think, a smithing table in this village over here. I think I just was being stupid like I usually am and I accidentally made one on accident one time. Okay, so we've got this, but what I don't have is mending on everything yet. So what I'm gonna do right now is only my tools and armor and weapons that have mending on it are going to get upgraded to netherite. Everything else will have to wait until we get mending on it. Okay, for now, this is it. So I have a mending villager. I just don't have any more mending books or emeralds. Thankfully, I think our rocket farm is actually gonna come in handy again. All I have to do is get myself some villagers that will allow me to trade paper for emeralds, and I can take the thousands of pieces of paper I have in this rocket farm and uh, use those to get myself a lot of emeralds. And then we trade those emeralds for a few more mending books. Okay, so... I forgot how much XP doing all these trades gives. Well, we'll have to uh, wait till the trades reset in the morning. However, 48 emeralds is what we got, and that's enough for at least one more mending book. Okay, so I want to put the book on my elytra just because I don't want it to break. And then with this leftover XP, let me make one more pickaxe and see if it'll be enough to uh, get another pickaxe with efficiency 4 and maybe, maybe fortune if we're lucky. That way we can finally have ourselves the perfect pickaxe. Well, it'll have efficiency 5. Well, now we almost have a full, perfectly enchanted netherite diamond armor weapons and tools. We just need a few more enchantments on some items. Okay, well, since we still have some enchanting to do, and I really don't have any XP, I know a great solution to our problems. Let's just head back to the end and build ourselves an Enderman XP farm. The thing that's great about Enderman XP farm is you can make them with relatively few materials and you can make yourself a really small one and still get a ton of XP really easily. So let's collect the materials we need and head over to the end. Now I could go out and create like an insane, awesome, amazing Enderman XP farm that requires like many hours and thousands of blocks to build, but it's, it's just unnecessary. I don't need, need I don't need all that. So with everything in this chest, we're just going to build ourselves a pretty easy and lightweight one that is still going to get us a ton of XP. I realized I just uh, I just placed my Ender chest down, but I didn't bring my uh, my Silk Touch pickaxe, so this is just gonna have to stay here for now. Okay, well, I uh, broke some temporary blocks behind the farm, 
And I had to fly away quickly because the Enderman came rushing in, which means that I believe we completed this farm correctly. Now, the downside with this farm is that since there is no drop, the Enderman do not die in one hit. However, since I don't need a lot of XP, I really don't need to spend too much time here, so I don't mind having to actually take the time to kill each of them individually. Um, because as soon as I get sharpness and sweeping edge on my, uh, on my tools and weapons, we should be okay. I don't know why I said sharpness and sweeping edge on my tools. I only need it on my sword. But as you can see, sitting here and just periodically clicking, I'm racking up XP pretty quickly and it's not taking too long. I could easily just sit here with an auto clicker and make my life 10 times easier, but I don't mind doing the little clicks. I almost feel like, for me, an auto clicker is almost cheating. But I don't care if other people use it. Okay, I think that's enough XP for now, so let's head back and see if we can do some enchanting. Okay, so we're just gonna make some stuff we can enchant. So, we still need a fortune pickaxe. We also need a good sword enchantment. My axe still needs efficiency 5. And my chest plate is actually fine. I don't know why I didn't make it netherite. I could have pretty easily just set up a villager trading system to get these enchantments, but I have the extra diamonds, and also, now that I have an XP farm, I don't mind doing it this way. Uh, if I start to run out of diamonds, I'll just start enchanting some books. I'm less about doing things the most efficient way, and I just do things sort of the way I'm comfortable with. I'm just here to have fun and play Minecraft. Okay, here is this. So now we've got the cover me in debris. Now what about enchantments? Okay, we've already got efficiency 5. Sharpness 3 I don't need. Okay, let's do that. We've got the pi- Oh, it came with silk touch too. Well, the sword enchantment, unfortunately, I don't need. But maybe I will use it. Can I add the fire aspect to get rid of the knockback? Oh, it just combines them. Will this have fortune? Nope. Sorry. I've already got a silk touch pickaxe. Fortune 2? Okay, yeah, that, that, that's a start. I'll just combine it for now because, you know, it's, it's, it's a start. And why not add fire aspect to this sword? Okay, sweet, we're doing pretty good. Oh, okay. So, let's go get a little bit more XP from this farm. We'll head back there, and then we'll come back and see if we have enough XP to, to combine these axes, and also to get a Fortune 3 Diamond Pickaxe. I also do not have Efficiency 5 on my Silk Touch Pickaxe, but I don't really need it, so it's okay. I don't really use my Silk Touch Pickaxe too often. Unless I'm, uh, unless I'm picking up my ender chest, which I have still left in the end. Okay, I wasn't really paying attention to, uh, how many endermen I was killing, and I think this is enough. Okay, can I please get fortune three? Let's try that again. Fortune three? Okay, one more try. Fortune three. Um... <gasps> oh, it worked that time. <laughs> right when I start to run out of XP. Bam. I definitely don't have enough XP to combine these axes. Well, you know what? It's okay. One more trip to the end won't kill us. And bam, there we go. We have full netherite armor and tools. Now, as for my sword, all I need to do is get one more diamond sword with efficiency 4 on it so I can get efficiency 5 on this one. But I'm going to wait to do that because honestly, I'm sick and tired of doing these trips to the end. <laughs> I could have planned it out better, but uh, my, my brain is going a thousand miles a minute. My, my little ADHD monkey brain can't focus on all of that. Okay, for my armor and tools, I still need four mending books. So let's take care of that. Man, I love doing this. Okay, now we should have enough emeralds to get our four mending books, and then we will have mending on pretty much everything. We won't have mending on our sword. I will put mending on our sword once we get sharpness five on it. It seems like that's the last enchantment we need. Oh, I only have looting two, so I also need to get looting three. We'll get there. Okay, here we go. Oh, the anvil broke. Well, good thing I have this backup back at home. Here we go. Okay, we got that done. What else needs mending? You need mending? Oh, my helmet has mending. Never mind. This needs mending. This also needs mending. Is that it? 
I guess that's it. So I've got this extra little mending book, which will be used for our sword as soon as we get all of the enchantments we need. We're not quite there, but we're almost there. We're so close. It's just that uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Having that extra level of sharpness and extra level of looting won't make too much of a difference, but we'll get there soon enough once we get a little bit richer. Regardless, we still got ourselves pretty rich and overpowered in this episode. I'm really, really happy with the progress we made because now, at least for our armor, we have full, perfect, fully ench- Oh. Wait a minute. Everything keeps slipping under me. I guess I didn't even realize that I only had protection three on my leggings instead of protection four. Well, again, it's not gonna- that one level of protection on one piece of armor won't make too much of a difference, but it's still something I'll want to do in the future. Maybe I'll take some time after this episode and in the next one and take some time to clean up my armor and sword just to uh, get it perfect. But we have almost perfect armor, weapons, and tools, which means that we should be fairly well protected against this world of hardcore Minecraft. Now that we're at this point, what makes me really comfortable is once we have full, fully enchanted netherite, it's pretty hard to die. Even in hardcore Minecraft, you can fight withers, get blown up by a creeper, get ganged up on skeletons, and you won't necessarily die if you have great armor. Especially with our totems, we're pretty set. The only thing I need now is a pretty awesome totem farm, because I don't have any totems besides the ones in my inventory. <laughs> I was able to get a few from a woodland mansion, but that won't cut it forever. Anyways, guys, that is all for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel because it really does help me out. But thank you all for watching. My name is Jay Wisp, and I will see you guys all in the next episode. I have a confession to make. I'm actually not good at Minecraft. Even though I've been a Minecraft YouTuber for like six years now, that doesn't mean I'm good at the game. The only reason I can survive so long in hardcore worlds is because of these guys right here. Totems of Undying are the only reason, uh, I'm alive. One of the key essential things you need at the beginning of any successful hardcore world is a raid farm. A raid farm helps you get lots of emeralds, lots of XP, but most importantly, a lot of Totems of Undying. And, uh, I've only got three of them right here. Since I would like to do a lot of things that will probably get me killed in the future, I, uh, I think a raid farm is a good place to go so that I don't actually lose this world. Now for any successful raid farm, you actually want to make it in the middle of an ocean, and the middle of an ocean has to be seven chunks away from any piece of land. So before we even start this raid farm, we have to find a suitable piece of real estate. An easy thing we can do is just turn our render distance to seven chunks like this, and bam, we can easily find some areas that uh, have no land within seven chunks. So, from all of our massive landscaping operations, we should hopefully have most, if not all, of the resources we need to make this raid farm. But I'll probably end up needing a couple things, so why don't we gather what we know we have, and put everything into some shulker boxes and see what we still need. Now, I've made some pretty lightweight, small starter raid farms in the past, but I've never built like an actual big beefy raid farm. So today, I would like to make an absolutely massive raid farm, which will get me more totems, emeralds, and XP than I would ever need in my entire life. Okay, we're actually missing more than I thought, so how about we go collect everything we need? Okay, I want to make myself a bubble elevator, so I need magma blocks, and I also need some soul sand. Okay, here we have both. Perfect. Okay, we acquired both. Let's head back to the overworld. All right, so let's fly back to the ocean area and make a little platform because I think we have everything we need. So there are designs for massive stackable raid farms, but if I'm being honest, those are really just overkill and flashy for no reason. There's realistically no reason why I would ever need a raid farm that produces that much, and so making something like that is just wasting my time and resources. So I think our best bet is to make a pretty standard but efficient and awesome raid farm design, but then we also built some additions to make the whole thing just a little bit better. Okay, so right here I'm more than seven chunks away from every piece of land, so this is a perfect spot for a raid farm, right in the middle of the ocean. I'm going to build myself just a tiny bit of a platform to stand on. If you've watched me for a while, I'm gonna make a pretty standard raid farm design that I normally make, and I'll put my shulker boxes here, and our bed. Whee! 
So a lot of people ask why we add these boats to this raid farm design sometimes, and that's because these boats actually help to catch Vexes. Frequently, Vexes will spawn during a raid and try to kill you, and they're pretty dang powerful. It only takes a few hits to die. I've seen a lot of hardcore Minecraft YouTubers lose their world to Vexes, and so the boats just sort of catch them and prevent most of them from hitting you. Although sometimes a few slip through the cracks. Okay, well, we pretty much have the entire raid farm finished. The whole thing is honestly super easy to make and it doesn't take a lot of time at all or a lot of resources. It's a fairly simple design. So even though that was quick, what we were about to do next will take a lot longer. We now have this little, little thing here and uh, this is where our villager is going to go. The only issue is uh, I don't really see a village uh, anywhere near here. The closest village to this raid farm is my village all the way on the other side of this zoo. So here's what we're going to have to do. We have to pick a Y level which we can safely travel flat across and just build a giant platform going straight from the villagers all the way on top of my zoo all the way past the rocket farm to the raid farm. So uh, this is going to take a while but I'm just going to use dirt. It's pretty easy. And instead of doing an automatic minecart rail system, I can simply use a boat. And that way I don't have to have stacks of minecarts and also break them. Doing this usually takes a while, but it'll be worth it for a raid farm that will give us unlimited totems, which will pretty much make us, in combination with our netherite armor, indestructible in hardcore Minecraft. Okay, so I'm literally just going to have to take all the dirt I have and make a giant pathway. This is probably going to take a lot of dirt. Thankfully, I have a lot left over from um, excavating this entire zoo. Okay, so right here at Y level 88, this is a Y level lower than my villager breeder. Um, and the reason we need it lower than our villager breeder is because when using a boat with a villager in it, you can go down blocks pretty easily. You can't go up any higher. So we're going to start at this Y level, and I guess we're just going to make a giant bridge that goes all the way to the farm. Please pray for me, this is gonna take forever. All right, that actually took a lot less dirt than I thought. We pretty much only just need a straight shot from the villager breeder all the way to the ocean here. I don't have to actually build a path to the villager breeder itself because all we have to do is take the villager in the water with us and then we can break the boat once we get right over here where he needs to be. So let's go back to the village, grab our villager, and hopefully this thing works. I also need to find a pillager outpost, but that's a problem for another time. I know this raid farm is going to be great, but I hate how slow moving villagers around is. At least we get a nice view of everything we've built as we move at a snail's pace to the raid farm. Ah, we've made it. All right, that actually didn't take too long. It's just going to be a little bit of a challenge making this villager accepted the job. Oh gosh, I'm really hoping this works. Okay, so if he's not stupid, which he probably is looking at his face. He should come up on land all on his own. You can't go that way. Yep, okay, you're almost there. Let me see, if, can I do this? Oh, there we go, okay. Come here, look, composter, just for you, buddy. Go up. Do you want the composter? Right there. Yeah, he shook his head, you see it? Do you see it? Gosh, these guys are so frustrating. Let me just take away all his options of movement and make, make it so that he can only go to the composter, okay. You're super close. We're almost there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go in. Yes, we got him. Okay. I'm going to keep him protected. He will spend his whole life inside of there, but that's okay. He'll be very happy. Ugh, it's always so frustrating working with villagers, I swear. Okay, so with the villager now finalized and safe in his little space, we should be able to come back here with the bad omen effect, and a raid should hopefully start all on its own if we did everything correctly. Now, I've made this design a few times and I've only messed it up once. Ooh! Oh, I forgot the water was there. <laughs> so we should be a-okay. Looking at the redstone, everything looks correct, so I'm hoping we'll be fine. Ooh, let's check this out. Yeah, I didn't want to spend three hours looking for a pillager outpost. I just used chunk base to show me the coordinates of one. 
but it's not too far from our base at all. All right, so we just need to find one of those pillagers carrying the flag on its back. And after we slay him, we should get the bad omen effect, and then we can start a successful raid. Let's see what kind of loot is in here, though. I'm curious. Hopefully there's some good loot. Usually it's nothing great, though. Eh, yeah, nothing too good. Finally! Oh, I've been here like 10 minutes! Okay, so I have to make sure I fly straight to the raid farm and not over any other villages. Now, even just with Bad Omen 1, we should still get some pretty good drops. If you didn't know, for each pillager you kill with that little flag on his back, you increase the level of Bad Omen you get. And as the level of Bad Omen increases from 1 to 5, the raids get harder or they sometimes have more waves in them. This big snowy mountain definitely has an ancient city underneath it. Now, simply flying close to the raid farm should trigger it to start, so <laughs> fingers crossed it works. I never know, it's always nerve-wracking because I spend a lot of time making this and I really hope it works. Okay, I think it's working. Well, uh, it definitely works. In fact, there were so many pillagers, most of them were dying on their own because it, they couldn't all fit. And it looks like the boats have successfully caught the Vexes, which are my least favorite mob in this game. So, we go back down. We don't have to go back down all the way, that's why we created this little water system. But another raid starts, and we can just keep going. The only thing I still need, though, is I need a little chest here with milk buckets, just to make sure I can get rid of the bad omen effect whenever I'm done. But just from one raid, our drops look pretty good. We got four totems of undying and half a stack of emeralds. So that means just two raids, which takes like a minute of my time, should give me around a stack of emeralds, which is actually pretty insane drops. I only have looting two on my sword as well. If I had looting three, those drops might be even higher. So yeah, here's the second raid done, and we actually have a stack and a half of emeralds. And we finally now have our unlimited source of totems, because this is, this is going to be great. Now I can just... You know, it doesn't even matter. I can just throw them off the edge. And you know what? I I have as many as I want, so it's no big deal. Do have to be careful, though, because whenever I leave the raid farm, I still have the bad omen effect. Okay, let's do this. Kill this. And milk this. Well, there we go. We successfully have a raid farm, which gives us a ton of XP, a ton of totems, and a ton of emeralds. The emeralds will be great to make a super sophisticated and large villager trading hall. The XP will be great because it'll act as a nice XP farm, just like our Enderman farm. And most importantly, after just a few raids, we will have more totems than we even know what to do with because we won't need that many. Here's what I'm gonna do. Let's go in our ender chest and grab a shulker box. And we will dye it yellow because this will represent our totem of undying the shulker box i usually carry around an ender chest full of shulker boxes with all the different materials i usually use in my world so i will have a yellow shulker box dedicated to totems a gold shulker box dedicated to golden carrots which is usually my end game food source maybe a red shulker box for our firework rockets and then usually one or two shulker boxes dedicated to iron blocks which usually act as all my beacons that I create around my world. So we are slowly but surely coming up in this world, and uh, it only took me 499 days to make a raid farm. But hey, we're almost at day 500, which is pretty dang cool. Ah, uh, here we go. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. I'll also put the emeralds in here just for now, because I don't really, uh, I don't really have anything to do with them. Now we have to break this entire dirt platform. Let me actually start at this end. So, we're gonna break this dirt path, and then once we're done, we are going to add a few additions to our raid farm to make it much bigger and better. Everything we could ever want in a raid farm. Okay, so let's go make the first two additions to our raid farm. Okay, so first, I want to add two little spaces up here. So first, on this side, I'm going to put a little platform, and this can house a chest, which then has milk buckets. And then on this side, I want to have space for two lava buckets, and this will just be an area for us to throw away all the drops we don't care about. Now, I could take my time to make an item sorter, but honestly, just going like this um, really doesn't take that much time, except when I throw my netherite pickaxe in there. Oh, that made me nervous. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's pretty easy. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is encase that little platform around the raid farm. The reason I want to do this is because in case I ever spend a considerable amount of time there farming resources, I want my little area to be caved in and safe uh, just so I don't die. Although, we can't leave this area like this because, unfortunately, uh, mobs will spawn. 
And when I say mobs, I mean the raid itself. And I didn't exactly consider that when I was building this, so uh, let me move these blocks and make it out of slabs instead. Okay, this is actually better because now the lava is uh, more accessible. I don't really need this platform here because I can easily just fall in the water if I fall, but it'll be nice just to have it. Okay, well, uh, this definitely is not the prettiest thing I've ever built. But the main reason I wanted this is just to be careful with vexes. Now, vexes can get in here and I can easily just get out. But also for phantoms, in case I ever spend a considerable amount of time in here, I don't want them to be able to get me. I don't plan on doing it anytime soon, but in the future, I might potentially use an auto clicker and just AFK at this raid farm for a long time. And I can just fill up the different chests with emeralds so that we can only collect emeralds, and I might use that as an emerald farm in the future. Okay, well, with our new unlimited supply of totems, um, let's test them out. I actually really like this spruce village in the middle of these mountains here. This is really cool. But anyways, I'm at this giant snowy mountain again for one reason and one reason only. Whenever you have a giant mountain like this, there is frequently an ancient city right underneath. And all you have to do is dig straight down to get to it. The reason I want to check out this ancient city is because I haven't been in one before in this world because we haven't really had the totems. But I want to see if we can get Swift Sneak 3 from one of these chests. And there was a creeper right, right above me, wasn't there? Oh gosh. Oh gosh, no! I was just gonna try to dig down fast enough to see if I could, uh, have it just die <laughs> when it, uh, came to me, but, uh, good thing we have these totems. But yeah, I really want Swift Sneak 3 because it's honestly one of my favorite enchantments Minecraft has ever added. Frequently when I'm building, I'm sneaking to make sure I don't fall off a ledge, and Swift Sneak makes it so that I can sneak pretty much at my sprint speed making building a heck of a lot faster. And for some of the mega base projects I have coming up, I'm gonna be doing a lot of building. Plus, you can get a lot of really good items from the chests within here. Oh, I accidentally set off a shrieker, so that means we're close. Okay, I set it off a second time. Can we please come in a cave here? Ancient cities spawn at much lower Y levels, so hopefully I don't spawn a warden right here. Let's be very careful with the little bit of sound we do make. Oh, in my Twitch streams, we've been raiding a lot of ancient cities lately, and it seems like per ancient city, I get about three to four enchanted golden apples. So if you want a lot of enchanted golden apples to survive your hardcore world, I really recommend you try exploring ancient cities. Even though there's a diamond over there, I think I just have to slowly walk away from this shrieker. Let's keep venturing down to a lower Y level. Well, I did find a dungeon. Okay, that's kind of cool. Anything good in here? Well, some golden apples, I'll take them. Let's see if we can find this ancient city. Ah, here we are. So ancient cities are pretty scary and hard to navigate. However, if you just fly around fast enough with an elytra, you're usually okay and won't spawn a warden. If you do spawn a warden, you can hopefully get out fast enough with your rockets. Oh, and perfect. Swift Sneak 3. Just what I wanted. I'll still try to check out the rest of the chests while we're here. Very quiet and very careful. I did find myself a very good hoe, though, which is uh, something I never thought I'd say. Now, there is, a, there is a couple shriekers up here, so uh, we're just going to get this chest and, uh, oh, we're going to get out. See ya. I actually don't think I spawned a warden. I think I still have three more chances. So, ooh, let's get the one in the middle here. This one always has a golden apple. There we go. Chest over there right next to a shrieker, so let's try this one. Well, we did it now. Let's get this chest really fast. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> I love making myself nervous. Well, it was worth it because we now have two enchanted golden apples. I consider that a win. I don't remember. Are these the chests? Yeah, these are the chests we already obtained. Let's try to get this one up here. Did I get this one? Yeah. See, even if you spawn a warden, as long as you fly away fast enough, you're A-OK. -okay. Hey, buddy. Come and get me. Come on. You want to come and get me? Come and try. Oh, he did try. Well, we can relax. Oh, no, we can't. There's another one. Where can I get out of here? Let's go up here. Well, the only other worthwhile loot in all of those chests was two more enchanted golden apples, but that's still pretty good because now we have a few. But nothing else was really worth my time, so let's uh, get rid of these scary monsters and let's get away from them. 
and we'll head back to our base. Well, with that successful ancient city raid, I think that's going to be all for today's episode. This was uh, really fun, and I'm glad we have a functional raid farm, as well as a few additions to it that'll make our life a lot easier. I will AFK probably for a little bit before the next episode, and just see how much loot we can get from that little farm, which seems to produce a ton of loot. But if you guys enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I really appreciate it. My name is Jay Wisp, and I will hopefully see you guys all in the next video. We have nearly six full double chests of hoes. I think I officially have more hoes than any other Minecraft YouTuber. We have now become invincible in our hardcore Minecraft world. Well, not entirely invincible, but mostly. Thanks to our brand new super amazing raid farm, we now have more totems of undying than we could ever need in our world. And so I wanna test our invincibility by taking on the hardest challenge I have ever attempted in Minecraft. A while back, I did a video where I raided 100 end cities. This video took a long time and it was pretty difficult to pull off, but it wasn't impossible. Today, I think we should try one-upping ourselves by raiding 100 ancient cities. We will go straight into the heart of where the wardens live and take all of their precious, precious loot. Now, one of the main benefits of doing this is that ancient cities actually give a ton of enchanted golden apples. I've been streaming on Twitch a lot. I have a separate hardcore worlds over there, and we found that on average, the average ancient city gives me about four to five enchanted golden apples. So, how many golden apples will we get if we raid 100 ancient cities? Not just the golden apples, but what other sorts of crazy riches will we get from doing this. Now, I don't wanna be stupid about this. I wanna play it safe, so let's get as prepared as possible. I think the first step of preparation is making sure we have a lot of firework rockets. Ancient cities are usually a couple hundred, if not a couple thousand blocks in between each other, so I wanna make sure I'm stocked up. Here's our current shulker box of firework rockets, but I think we should make a bit more. Let's go to our firework rocket farm and see what kind of magic we can make happen. I'm curious. I wanna see your predictions down below in the comments section. How many enchanted golden apples do you guys think we can acquire from raiding 100 ancient cities? Given we aren't gonna be killed by the warden. This is actually going to be super dangerous because if you didn't know, the warden can actually uh, kill you pretty easily. One of the warden's attacks completely ignores your armor and can kill you in pretty much an instant. Clear some of my inventory space here. Okay, you know what, for now I'm gonna put materials to make more rockets in this chest and we're just gonna take all these rockets with me. I can always come back here if I need more. But a full inventory full of rockets should be a good start. I really just don't know how many rockets we're gonna need. When we raided 100 end cities, I used about an entire shulker box full of firework rockets, but uh, I assume we're probably gonna need more for 100 ancient cities. Let's load these up. Okay, so we'll take that. We have a full shulker of totems. Now, only a few of my items are in these chests. Most of my items are in chests scattered throughout the zoo, right over here or in the village. I still haven't really organized everything yet. Okay, so let's take this crafting table and make one more shulker box dedicated to firework rockets. I like to color coordinate them like this, just so you know easily when you go in your under chest which shulker box is which. Now, if you've been watching me for a while, you do know that I am uh, severely colorblind. But as long as I don't make colors that are too similar, I can still tell which ones win. Now, another thing I wanna bring with me is just like a ton of chests. I have no idea how much loot we're going to get, and so I wanna make sure we have enough chests to hold all of it. Now, if you don't know, ancient cities typically only spawn underneath giant mountainous regions like this right in front of us. And so that means we often will have to travel thousands of blocks in between ancient cities. And so what I actually wanna bring with me is a decent amount of obsidian so we can build some nether portals. Using nether highways is is a much more efficient way to travel thousands of blocks. Basically, for every block you travel in the nether, it's actually eight blocks in the overworld. So you can travel eight times as fast just by going into the nether. Okay, I have just about 10 obsidian from that portal. Let's go in the nether because I know there's some other portals inside of here from different portals I've made elsewhere in the world and we can just break those to collect obsidian. While we're doing this, I do want to mention that uh, I want to give this world a unique name, and so if you have any fun name suggestions, let me know down in the comments below, and I'll try to check them all out. Okay, this combined with all of the obsidian we have in our chests should definitely be enough. You dare challenge me? Yeah, that's what you get, buddy. Oh, you know what? I'm actually gonna bring this with me. I do have the swift sneak enchantment on my leggings, which we got uh, last episode, so we can sneak swiftly. But 
we should definitely use carpet blocks to dull the sound we make while walking just in case we need it. I don't know if we'll use it too frequently, but you know what? It can't hurt to bring it with us. Since we're gonna be running away from potentially thousands of wardens, I wanna make sure we are, uh, accurately prepared for this. I think with that, we should be pretty prepared to take on this challenge. I guess if I need anything else, I can get it later. Now, here's how we're actually going to do this. It would be nearly impossible for me just to find 100 ancient cities by chance. So what we're going to do is use a third party program called Chunk Base. Basically, Chunk Base allows you to search for things in your world by typing in your seed and it shows you where different structures are. Ancient cities usually spawn underneath giant snowy mountains like this, so maybe we'll be able to find our first one pretty easily. Using this program will allow me to pretty much search for just ancient cities and find out where they are pretty dang easily. Also, when searching for ancient cities, you have to go pretty low because they spawn at about Y level negative 50. Any junk I acquire, like mob loot or blocks from breaking things, I'm not going to count in my total loot counter. Oh, well, we have a mine shaft. That's not quite what we want. Well, I don't think we have an ancient city here, folks. Okay, so if I did everything correctly, there should be an ancient city right underneath this snowy mountain right here. This mountain was right next to the one we were already at. So, I just was a little bit off. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 what's going on? Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me, please, please. Okay, we're safe. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? I don't know. <gasps> oh! No! Oh, uh, I think we're inside of an ancient city. So, here is my basic plan for this episode. Now that we are fully prepared, we are going to raid 100 ancient cities and collect most, probably all, of the loot we find within it. By loot, I mean the loot within the chests, but I will also try to loot any other rare items we find nearby. For example, there are some structures in ancient cities that hold skeleton skulls, and that's a pretty rare item, so I'd like to collect that for myself. So let's get our ender chest out and grab our loot shulker boxes. And it's all just going to be randomly collected for now. I'm not going to organize it in the shulker boxes right away, but in the future, when we put everything in the chests, I do want to organize it, okay? Here's where we have to be quiet. Now opening this will trigger, right? Yes. Okay, I think I need to give myself a clear inventory between each chest opening. So I'm probably going to have to just open a shulker box right in between uh, every time I open a chest. Oh, Warden will spawn pretty soon, so let's be quick about this. Be very quick about this. We have to be quick. One more noise and then there's a Warden. Uh, no, I'll keep that, I'll keep that. Okay, 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 okay. Give me your loot, give me your loot. We gotta fly out of here quick. Oh god, the Warden, no. Okay, okay, he's spawning, he's spawning, he's spawning. Wait. Oh, uh, hey. Anyways, let's get out of here. Uh, I can't see that well, but uh, that's okay. We'll have a golden apple, and everything's gonna be okay. I just have to fly away. So, here's the thing about ancient cities. Wardens are absolutely terrifying. However, as long as you keep your elytra equipped and make sure you have firework rockets on hand, you'll be okay. As long as you don't hit the warden, it will not have a scent trail on you and it won't follow you as long as you are far enough away. So eventually these wardens will despawn even though he can smell me when we get really close. And we should be a-okay. But uh, we just have to make sure to avoid him. So let's collect all of the chests within here. Okay, there's no way I'm gonna be able to keep every single item or else this is gonna get too crazy. So what I'm actually going to do is only keep items sort of specific to ancient cities. We'll see how many echo shards we can get, how many disc fragments we can get. And since diamond hoes are also some unique loot from cities, we'll keep that as well as all the enchantment books that are swift sneak three. Everything else is pretty much gonna have to go or else we're just not gonna have room for all of this. I also don't really need any of the other items. So we can just expect that we'll get a few hundred of those. Dark's kind of wasting these items, but I just don't need them. I may change my mind on the loot I keep later, but for now, I think this is a good route to go. So here's our collection from the first ancient city. There's tons of cat music discs, but I just don't need them. But yeah, this is pretty good loot, and these are pretty much the things I will collect, and I've decided I'm gonna collect pants too, just to see how much pants I can get. So we have one ancient city down, and uh, 99 more to go. 2,000 years later. All right, we are back at my house because we have officially raided six ancient cities. So after just six, this is the loot we have. We have officially filled up just about four shulker boxes. This one's only a little bit filled, but uh, 
we have a ton of really good loot. And uh, we are never going to need to get pants or any hose ever again. The time it took to raid these six ancient cities was about two and a half hours, and you can check that out actually on the live stream tab of my channel. I knew this project would take a long time, so to get some content out, I'm trying to live stream a lot of the raiding, and that way you guys know I did it in the background. I figured this project was going to take a long time, so uh, I'm streaming most of the ancient cities I raid. It's a nice way for me to get some content out in the time I uh, don't have anything to upload because this video is going to take probably a few hundred hours. It may have only taken a few hours to raid those six ancient cities, but as we raid more and more, it's only going to get farther and farther away from our base. And so I think it's finally time for us to set up some sort of nether portal system on the nether roof, and uh, that way we can travel easier. Basically, we create a nether portal, raid all the ancient cities in the area, create another one a few thousand blocks away, rinse and repeat until we're finished with this entire project and then every once in a while i will have to come back here to restock up on supplies thankfully we aren't really using much food but in terms of the firework rockets we are going through them like crazy um i'm doing a very thorough job at trying to raid these ancient cities and i end up using about an entire stack of rockets for one ancient city so i guess uh it's time to keep raiding this is gonna take a long time please pray for me So, to make raiding ancient cities a little bit more fun, I actually invented a new game we can play. So, the game I invented is called Bonk the Big Boy, and uh, here's how it works. Basically, ancient cities are small enough that wardens will follow you throughout the entire thing, even if you uh, have an elytra and are flying. So, here's what you do. You get nice and close to the warden, give the warden a nice chance to, you know, smell you, get close to you. You pause your game, and you give yourself just enough time to uh, smack the warden, and then fly away! You fly away really quickly, and uh, use a totem. This isn't a joke, if you've been watching the live streams, I've been doing this during the live streams, just to make it so that the stakes are a little bit higher when raiding these things. It basically just helps to keep me on my toes, so I have something to do while flying around these big ancient cities. But the warden will follow you around, and it'll follow you for a long time. Gets closer, and closer. And closer but thankfully he's close enough that I can now go to the other side of the ancient city and grab these chests okay so we've officially set up our little nether station and we have our loot from raiding 15 ancient cities and uh I've definitely got way more hose than any other minecraft youtuber and pants maybe but besides that we also have a ton of enchanting books a ton of name tags leads uh, I have everything categorized here with the Echo Shards, Amethyst Shards, and Disc Fragments. And then here we have our Music Discs and our Skeleton Skulls. So, the next step is to create a Nether Portal probably a few hundred blocks away. Let me choose a direction. Let's go west. Let's go straight from these chests. We'll go a few hundred blocks straight. We'll build another portal. And then we'll raid all the ancient cities within a few thousand blocks of that area and keep repeating the process. We have reached a fantastic milestone. We have officially raided 50 ancient cities. This project is honestly taking a lot longer than I thought, but it's worth it. At first, it was pretty easy to get in three or four an hour, but as we're having to travel farther and farther, and now that I'm tens of thousands of blocks away from my base, it's taking a really long time. It's time to restock up on some stuff though. But we've got a lot more raiding to do, so let's get on it.
Well, everyone, it is finally official. After two full weeks and 45 hours of my life dedicated to raiding ancient cities, we have officially raided 99 ancient cities. We have spawned thousands of wardens, collected stacks of enchanted golden apples, and it is finally time to raid our final ancient city. Through doing this big project, I've actually learned something pretty interesting. What I've learned is that ancient cities are actually extremely easy to raid and the Warden is not as big of a threat as everyone thinks it is. You can pretty much just go through ancient cities willy-nilly and not worry about spawning a Warden because, you know, even if you get really close to a Warden, it's not gonna kill you. We can even get close, we can say hello, we can let him sniff us, I can hit him, have him on our trail, and I can fly away. Now, I obviously wouldn't recommend being intentionally stupid and spawning the Warden, but if you do, it's not a big deal. The Warden will follow you around for a few minutes, but after a while, it'll stop chasing you. The Warden can- oh, a spawner. The Warden can do a lot of damage, but again, as long as you play your cards right, you'll be okay. Let's make sure I have an exit out of here. But yeah, honestly, as long as you keep firework rockets on your body, you'll be okay, and uh, the Warden is not really gonna get you. Honestly, the only difficult part about this challenge was just the sheer amount of times I had to go into chunk base and uh, look for ancient cities. But thankfully, most of it was done on stream, and you guys kept me good company. Speaking of, as we take on more big build projects, I'm probably going to do a lot of the background work off stream. And so if you guys ever want to join me, make sure to subscribe to the channel with the bell icon. And you're the Warden close by, but I think we've got time to get our bearings. Oh, maybe not. I want to make sure I get every single chest in this ancient city since it is officially our 100th ancient city, which is actually kind of crazy. Okay, I've flown through here a few times and I think we have officially collected every single chest inside of this ancient city. Keep exploring just a little bit more to make sure. I think the most important thing to keep in mind when raiding ancient cities is just to keep moving. You know, you're going to spawn wardens, but uh, you can just fly around. A lot of people recommended I build a redstone device and a chunk loader to make it so that wardens can't bother me. Pretty much makes it so that they can't spawn. But honestly, that takes some of the fun out of this challenge, and I don't seem to really struggle that much with keeping wardens off my tail. Even if it's pitch black, you know, just fly, keep close to the ceiling, and you'll probably be okay. Okay, I have definitely acquired all of the loot from this ancient city, so I think it is now time to go back to our little nether base. And, uh, <laughs> I'm stupid. But yeah, I think it's time to go back to our nether base and do a recap of all the loot we got from raiding 100 ancient cities. Alrighty, so let's head to our little nether hub and see what our loot is looking like. Alright. Here we have it. Here is officially all of our loot from raiding 100 ancient cities. So honestly, this is pretty insane because we got a lot more than I thought. We have nearly six full double chest of hoes. I think I officially have more hoes than any other Minecraft YouTuber. But we all knew that. Besides that, we also have nearly six full double chests of pants. So uh, I'm definitely never going to need pants ever again. The thing that surprised me the most is the amount of enchantment books we have. Out of these enchantment books we're looking at here, most of them are only Swift Sneak 3 and Swift Sneak 2 books. I tried to mostly get Swift Sneak 3, but if we look through, a few of them aren't Swift Sneak 3, and uh, you know, half the enchantment books I threw out, so we got a ton. Next we have our name tags where we got about three and a half stacks and our leads where we got about four and a quarter stacks. Next I originally tried to keep echo shards, amethyst shards, and disc fragments organized but once we started to get a lot I realized that that wasn't really an option. So we have a ton of these. And then finally we have our music discs which we got a lot of but this final chest is a special one, because not only does it have our music discs, but it has the skeleton skulls and all of the golden apples and enchanted golden apples we got. The funny thing about ancient cities is it's much easier to get enchanted golden apples than it is to get normal golden apples. You only occasionally find normal golden apples in the front chest in front of the warden statue, but uh, enchanted golden apples I would usually get anywhere from 2 to 5 per ancient city. So with our three and a half stacks of enchanted golden apples, I'll probably keep a stack on me at all times. We also have to keep in mind that I did have a few close calls with wardens, which means that uh, I actually ate a few of these already. So all in all, after raiding 100 ancient cities, I think I am officially one of the richest Minecraft YouTubers, but I don't know. If you guys know anyone 
that has any more hose than I do, honestly, let me know down in the comments below because I don't believe it. You will most likely never catch me raiding an ancient city ever again in this world, at least not for a long time. And uh, I really don't have any place to store all of my loot, so I guess it's just gonna stay in the nether for now. But hopefully we'll build some sort of storage system fairly soon. Well, what should I spend 50 hours raiding 100 of next? Let me know down in the comments below. Jokes aside, that is all for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did enjoy, please really consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. This video took a super long time and a tremendous amount of time to work, so I really hope you truly did enjoy it. But that's all for today's episode. My name is Jay Wisp, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Minecraft 1.20 is finally here. One of this update's most anticipated features is armor trims. Today, we spend over 200 in-game days collecting every single new armor trim and displaying them inside of a massive Greek temple. So, for sake of organization, I want to collect all of the armor trims in alphabetical order. I normally don't care about organization, but for this video, I just want to keep track of what I'm doing. The only armor trims that will not be caught in alphabetical order are Host, Razor, Shaper, and Wayfinder. The reason for that is because those can only be found by brushing away suspicious gravel in the new trail ruins. Now, trail ruins actually aren't all that rare, but you're looking at one right in front of me. So they may not be rare, but they're really hard to find out because they are almost always buried underneath the ground and are extremely hard to find. If you are lucky though, you can occasionally find one on the surface and it'll look like this. Random blocks of gravel and mud bricks and assorted blocks like this. And you don't get anything from sweeping away gravel, but you have to find the new suspicious gravel block, which has a slightly different texture. By brushing this away, we have a very slim chance to receive one of the new armor trims from suspicious gravel. So as we collect all of the other armor trims, we are basically going to just be looking for these on our way. So our first victim is the coast armor set, which we can actually get from chests inside of a shipwreck. I believe I'm far enough to see new shipwrecks that haven't been loaded in before, but I'm not seeing any. Oh, never mind. I lied. Don't don't listen to me. Okay, so this one has about a 16% chance to spawn in the chests. Now, even though you need four for a full set of armor, I pretty much only realistically need one because with one armor trim, you can actually craft all the others you need just by using diamonds and some associated block. It's a pretty simple process. I will show off later on. Okay, coast armor trim. Where are you? Show yourself. And we didn't get one. I'm also keeping an eye out for the new cherry blossom biome, just because they're so pretty. Okay, well, I was going to start first alphabetically, but actually the wild armor trim, which is the last alphabetically, can be found in jungle temples. So, uh, let's check to see if we can find it. It has about a 33% chance to spawn. And we didn't get it. About this chest. Oh, we got two of them. There we go. Two wild armor trims. And of course, I will take the diamond. Now, all armor trims require seven diamonds, as well as that associated block I mentioned to replicate. So for each armor set, if we only get one trim, we still need 21 diamonds just for the one armor trim. And there's about 14 armor trims total. So good thing I have a lot of diamonds because we're going to need them. There's actually 16 armor trims. I lied. Well, one down, 15 to go. The drop rates really vary because the Vex armor trim, which can be found in Woodland Mansions, has a 50% chance to drop, whereas armor trims like Ward and Sneak found in Ancient Cities only have about a 1% chance to be found. Man, I should have saved my video for rating 100 Ancient Cities after this update. I really messed up. <laughs> But while we're on the search for armor trims, let me know down below in the comments section what is your favorite armor trim. I really like the silence armor trim, but the eye armor trim is also pretty cool. I don't know, there's so many that are so cool. I really like all of them. This is a great feature. Oh, here's another one. Well, our luck is really bad today. I guess our luck isn't bad, just the odds of getting them are pretty rare. We're gonna stop on this little island to restock. Thank you, little island. I appreciate you a lot. Huh? Uh, hello? Hello? I'm gonna drown! Okay, I guess we're not getting anything today. Oh. What was that? We're on the pre-release, not the real update. Sometimes there's some bugs. And no armor trim. The Tide armor trim has a 20% chance to drop from killing Elder Guardians, so... Maybe we should try our luck while we found a new one of these uh, ocean monuments. I don't even have a way to breathe. I'm just gonna go in and try, and if we can't make it work today, we'll get some potions later on. Nope. Man, I wanted to get this one first too because I thought it would be easy, but this coast armor trim is really trying its hardest to evade us. Alright, let's see it. Oh! It worked, and we got two of them. Okay, sweet! 
two down. 14 to go. So the next armor troop I'm looking for is Dune. And Dune has a 14.3% chance to be found in Desert Temple Pyramid chests. So let's check out this one right here and see if we can get it. Now, even though it does only have a 14% chance to spawn, when you do find it, you actually will always find two per chest. See, let's see. I'll take the TNT. Okay, let's check. Uh, nothing. And nothing again. And nothing again. Ooh, but I'll take the horse armor. And nothing a fourth time. Well, let's keep looking. Thankfully, I feel like with my experience, desert temples are really common. So I don't really think we'll have much trouble finding one. Okay, here we go. Since we traveled so much in the video where we raided 100 ancient cities, I have no idea if these structures have been loaded in or not before. So I might be looking for items that aren't even spawned in yet. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Well, on to our third. I'm a little bit confused. Is this a pyramid right here? Or is this a mistake? Well, I uh, I think this is a pyramid. I've just never seen it spawn so, uh, so oddly before. Fingers crossed we have better luck. Hey, and we did have better luck. There we go. We got two of the dune armor trims. Three down. Uh, 13 to go. I'm just going to throw some of the good stuff we get in here. Be our shulker box dedicated to all of the armor trims we've collected. Actually, I still thankfully have a obsidian and a flint and steel in one of my shulker boxes. So let's see if we can get the rib and the sentry armor trim both found in the nether. Rib has about a 6% chance to spawn in nether fortresses, whereas sentry has a 25% chance to be spawned in piglin bastion chests. So hopefully one piglin bastion should do it, but we'll probably need to go through a few different nether fortresses. Thankfully, I've still got thousands of firework rockets on me. Oh, that was pretty easy. Let's check this one out. Nope. See ya. Actually, I want to take them on, so let's do this. We'll use the golden apple to our advantage here. Oh, I didn't even see the brute. I had to just fly away. I'm sorry. Man, it's hard to actually fight these enemies because my performance isn't the best right now. I've got a pretty beefy computer, but it seems like every time there's a pre-release, the uh, performance isn't great until they actually release the update and add some optimization patches. And there's nothing. Oh, this makes my life easy. Thank you, guys. Well, no loot there, so let's keep moving. Okay, right, come on, come on. Nope. Fingers crossed. Nope. I'm gonna scream if there's not an armor trim in these chests. Okay. Oh, boy. Let's handle this better. Why are there so many brutes? Man, this game hates me. In this chest? Take that. This chest. Oh! Netherite upgrade and the snout armor trim. When I was saying sentry armor trim earlier, I really meant snout armor trim. Sentry is from pillage outposts. I got that confused. And we got another snout and an iron block. Ooh. Okay, now we just need to find another fortress, but I've been having pretty bad luck finding these. It seems like they're a lot more rare than I thought. Please, please, please. Oh. Come on, man. This one? Nope. Well, that's our second fortress fully rated with no armor trim. Oh, we got it. There we go. Check the rest of the chest to see if there's another one. I mean, the chances of that are extraordinarily low, but hey, it's worth a shot. Plus, we're getting a ton of diamonds, which is really nice. All right, we are doing pretty good so far. Now, I actually went back to my house so I could get some Eyes of Ender because the eye armor trim has a 100% chance to spawn in stronghold library chests. Alongside that, the spire armor trim has about a 7% chance to be found in end city loot chests. So we will raid a new stronghold we haven't been to before, and we will find one. And then we'll take on some end cities, and hopefully after a couple end cities, we'll be able to find ourselves one. Plus the end cities will get us lots of diamonds, which will help with making these armor sets. So I'm confused because there should be a stronghold. I've been looking through this for a while. Oh, there's stone brick right in front of me. I'm stupid. Please, please just ignore me. I, my IQ's lower than the floor right now. Now, I believe this also has a small chance to spawn in other stronghold chests, but it does have a 100% chance in library chests. Of course, all of these drop rates I'm mentioning are during the pre-release, and so I'm sure in the finalized version of the update, things are subject to change. Well, here we go. Okay, there's the eye armor trim. Eye is actually one of my favorites. I think it looks super sick. It really depends on your skin, though, because with some skins, it can look kind of funky. 
And there we go. We got two of them. Okay, we've already got six, so that means we only need ten more. This actually isn't too bad. Except the journey has just begun because there are two armor trims, Silence and Ward, which are only found in ancient cities and only have about a 1% chance to spawn in, which is incredibly rare. I mean, if you think about it, ancient cities do tend to have a lot of chests, so I guess that kind of makes up for it, but still, it will probably be pretty difficult to find. Come on, come on. Oh, I did it! <laughs> oh, that was kind of sick. Plop the render distance up all the way and start looking for some new end cities. Oh, that was easy. Is this one we've raided before? That seriously took like two seconds. I believe we have raided this before, unfortunately. Maybe not. Maybe some of the blocks are just glitched off. I'm confused. I didn't see the dragon head, so I assumed I collected it already. Oh, that was really easy. <laughs> what? Well, I couldn't find the portal, so uh, I'm just going to fly back to zero, zero. We do everything right. This should be the main end. I yeah, there we go. There we go. So the last two overworld structures I really need are pillager outposts and a woodland mansion. Man, I love chunk base. Oh, okay. I didn't expect us to get it that easily. Man, the amount of time this video is taking so far, I should have just done a 100 days video for this challenge. Thankfully, the Vex armor trim does have a really high chance to drop. It's just about a 50% chance from the chests. Let's do this. Oh boy, that was a big hit. Hold on. Good thing I have these apples. Yeah, take that, buddy. I'm not used to the new effect where the screen actually tilts in the direction in which you take damage. Previously, it used to always tick to the right, but now it can tilt your screen in any direction. And uh, it's just, it takes some getting used to. I've been playing this game for a decade, and it's pretty much been the same the whole time. Like, with the odds, we only need two chests, but I, I can't seem to find any. Okay, does this plant room chest count? Apparently not. Oh, I know these little fighting rooms. Oh. <laughs> ah, there we go. Ooh, and an enchanted golden apple. Nice. Make sure I check every chest just to make sure I didn't miss any. Well, it looks like we only got one vex, but hey, that's not bad. All right, so I came back just so we could grab some potions of night vision and water breathing which will be very useful so that we can take on an Elder Guardian. Elder Guardians have a 20% chance to drop the new Tide armor trim, so there should be some Elder Guardians in this ocean near us right here. And even though they've been spawned in before, we can, uh, we can still take them on and have that drop chance work in our favor. So let's have the night vision, and then the water breathing. And I do have a milk bucket. I'm not sure if this is going to really work because... Uh, we're gonna just get that effect that isn't gonna allow us to dig down deep at all. All right, let's put our chest plate on. Oh, he's right there. Okay, I'm gonna need a chance of golden apple just because I have them. Why not? I've got enough golden apples to spare. And there we go. We got one tide armor trim. Let's see if we can find the other elder guardians for some more. Oh, there he is. Yeah, take that, buddy. Oh, we got another one. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's get out of here. Well, I could only find those two Elder Guardians, but we got ourselves two Tide Armor Trims. But there we go. We have the Tide Armor Trim. Oh, gosh. I can't break it, can I? Okay, so let's head back to our Nether Highway because we need to travel really far away so that we can find a fresh ancient city to hopefully drop for us the Ward and the Silence Armor Trim. Ward actually has a 5% chance to drop an Ancient City chest, but Silence only has about a 1% chance. So I'm really hoping we're having good luck today. Good thing I've got a lot of rockets. We're going to go through them. Okay, according to Chunk Base, our usual source for this sort of thing, there should be an Ancient City right underneath me. Oh gosh, we're in 1.20, so I don't have my full Bright mod, do I? Oh gosh! Oh! 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 Excuse me? I saw that there were creepers, but for some reason I just thought I could outrun them or something. I, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking there. Really terrifying, honestly. Okay, I've got to defend my little hole now. Blow up, blow up already. Come on, come on. Okay, we should be safe now. Let's just dig it really fast, so we can have them drop down and just die when they drop down. Close, I think. Dark. I can't see anything. Oh, you know what? I'm stupid. I've still got this on me. Aha. Odds are actually probably pretty high I've raided this before, so I don't know. Have I been here before? Check. Nope, the chests are still intact. And no armor trim there. What about these chests? Nope. And nope. Why is there a ruined portal on top of this portal? 
That's odd. Anyone in here? Nope. Uh-oh, we spawned a warden. Let's be careful here. Oh, well, there's not an armor trim, but I'll take the enchanted golden apples. Well, uh, this is the last chest in this ancient city. And no armor trim. Did I miss any chests? Maybe I'm just really unlucky today. Well, I guess it's time to make our way to the next ancient city. Okay, right under this massive mountain. It's at Y level 184. <laughs> there should be an ancient city underneath us. Uh, not an ancient city, but close. Oh, I think we're close. Oh, here we are. And with the no night vision, so we're really gonna have to hope for the best here. Hey, buddy. I do at least have torches, but they're not gonna help much. Dang, I should have brought night vision with me. Man, are the drop rates really this bad? I guess 1% chance is 1 in 100, but ward is still a 5% chance, which I feel like isn't too bad. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure I raided all the chests, and here goes another ancient city with no armor trims. This is gonna be fun. Okay, so there should be one under here. I did go home and made some more night vision potions, so uh, we should be good. Thankfully, I made golden carrots a while ago, so I've got a lot. Ah, oh, here we go. Fingers crossed we have better luck in this one. I wonder if I've come across an arbitrum already, and I just passed it up because I was trying to move too fast. I hope not. Hello. I'm just breaking the chests, so I know which ones I've gone through. Oh. Please have an armor trim. Nope. Have an armor trim? Nope. Either of you have an armor trim? No. Do you? No. Is my game broken, or am I just really unlucky? Okay, I have raided three more ancient cities. Yes, three. I'm not kidding. And, uh, I have still not found a single ward or silence armor trim. At this point, I've raided like 40 or so chests, so I'd expect to at least see ward once. Um, so I don't know if they're not added into the game or if my luck is just really bad and I'm gonna have to raid many ancient cities. Thankfully, I am using chunk base just like I was doing with the ancient city video because this would be impossible without the use of chunk base. Please, please. Oh. Oh, and we ran into night vision again. Good thing I brought like a sharper full of these potions. After doing the video where we raided 100 ancient cities, I never wanted to do this again, but man, I just want these stupid armor trims. I committed to it, so now I have to do it. Well, folks, here we have a another city with absolutely no armor trims. I don't know what to do anymore. All right, sixth, seventh ancient city is the charm maybe hopefully i'm so sick of ancient cities why did i do these videos oh boy oh boy oh boy here we are okay okay Whew. that was a little intense i didn't need to fall like that donde please no please no okay everyone everyone i have some big news i've been tweeting at the minecraft developers on twitter because i thought it was broken but actually i'm just stupid it's just extremely rare to get these armor trims, I guess, and of course, I got silence from this chest. Not even Ward. Ward is the easy one. Ward has a 5% chance to drop. Silence is only a 1% chance, which is 1 in 100, but at this point, I've definitely raided, I feel like, at least 100 ancient city chests. But I'm very glad we got it because now I at least know it's possible. After raiding like eight ancient cities, I was starting to think that it was impossible. There should still be a couple chests around here though, so let's see if we can get lucky. Well, at least we got the hard one. Now we just have to get the easy one somehow. If I could recommend one thing for any of you, it would be to specifically not look for the silence or ward armor trim. It's just not worth it, man. Okay, but on the way to the next ancient city, I think we found ourselves trail ruins here. So let's see if maybe we can get any of the uh, new armors from this. I believe it has to be broken with a brush and it cannot be broken with a shovel. Okay, is this suspicious gravel? It is. And that's definitely not armor trim. Some more suspicious gravel? Ooh, right here. No? Am I just dumb? I think I am dumb. Oh, 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 is this a pottery fragment? Or a pottery sherd, I should say. It is. Another sherd? Why are they called sherds and not shards? That's so weird. Come on, give me an armor trim. What is this, bone meal? Oh, just die. Okay, I'm not going to use my shovel to break stuff anymore. It's too quick. Come on, give me an armor trim. Definitely not an armor trim. How much is there to excavate? I didn't realize these, these trail ruins were so large. Is that enchanted golden apple? Oh, no, it's a candle. Never mind. Another pottery shirt, perhaps? Okay, but you know what would be really cool? 
Some armor trims. What's the bottom of it? Does it just stop here? These are so large. I never realized how big these structures were. Uh-oh. Okay, so if just suspicious gravel falls, you also lose any potential drops inside. I see, I see. What is this, pink glass? What? That's kind of weird. Okay, I'll take it. See, the interesting thing is the chance to get the new armor trims are about 8% in Java Edition, so they shouldn't be too hard to get from these structures. I guess I just have to expose every piece of gravel and hope I'm lucky. Armor trim. Come on, come on. Are you an armor trim? Oh, I don't know if I've heard this before. I haven't even kept up with the patch notes for this update, so I didn't know there was a new music disc. Come on, you're telling me all this gravel doesn't have one single armor trim? Not one. Wow, it's got string at least. <gasps> this is an armor trim? It is, yes! Okay, which one is this gonna be? Oh, we got the razor armor trim, nice. Okay, there's only four armor trims left that we need, which shouldn't be too bad, except three of them are from trail runes. Is this another armor trim? Oh, we got Shaper now. Okay, now we have good luck. These ruins are big, so it shouldn't be too hard to find what we need just from one of them. Oh, oh, oh. What is that one? Oh, we got two razors. Okay. I guess you really have to start digging from the upper layers first, because if the suspicious gravel falls, you're going to lose your items. Well, we still need the host and wayfinder armor trims from... uh the trail ruins and then besides that we only need ward from ancient cities so i'm going to continue looking for ward from ancient cities and if we stumble along any trail ruins on the way we'll check them out i will definitely be more careful when excavating my next trail ruin because i didn't realize uh how difficult it was to tell the difference between vicious gravel and normal gravel well another ancient city with no armor trim We'll get there one of these days. No way, check this out. This is right by. Is this another trail ruin? Oh, well, I'm almost dead. Maybe our luck is turning around. Truthfully, I've been looking for these last few armor trims for hours. Thankfully, editing will make it a lot shorter than that. I'm just gonna try to dig this down layer by layer because I don't wanna miss anything. Hopefully, if we play our cards right, we can get everything from this last trail ruin. Come on, give me an armor trim. <gasps> is this an armor trim? Oh, it is. Which one is it? Please tell me it's one I don't have. Oh, I've already got Shaper, but I'll take it. Is this another one? No, it's a shirt. Okay, this one is... This one's an armor trim. Which one is it, though? I don't I don't know what it is. Oh, it's the Wayfinder! Hey! Let's do this. Grab our thing. Oh, my gosh. Look at all of this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 armor trims. The last two we need are the Host Armor Trim, which can also be found in Trail Ruins, and then the Ward Armor Trim, which we still have yet to find from Ancient Cities, after raiding like 11 of them, I think? Interestingly, these are called Trail Ruins, which means they were some sort of ancient trail of some sort. We know that. But what I'd like to know is if any of you guys have any fan theories about what Trail Ruins are. Obviously, there's a lot of Minecraft lore we don't know about when you consider things like the Warden having a giant portal, or even what are ancient cities? I mean, they're called cities, but like, what were they cities for? Who did they house? What were they used for? But in terms of trail ruins, how do you think trail ruins fit in with the Minecraft lore? There's obviously a lot of lore we're missing, so I hope we get some updates pretty soon that uh, answer some of our questions. I would just like to hear what you guys think down below, so that we can sort of bounce questions and ideas off of each other. Oh, oh. There's, there's the peakings of another armor trim, but I don't know if it's one we have already or not. Please be a new one. Oh, we already have Razor. Dang it. But you know what? I'm not mad if we're getting more of the same armor trim because uh, we'll need it in the future. Because we do need four of each. We still have to craft, you know, four of each of these, which is going to take a lot of diamonds. Oh, oh, Pottery Shard. Do we have this one? Oh, ah, we finally got it. Yes, after all of this excavating end, it looks like right before our brush is about to break too, we got the host armor trim. Now, let's get out of here and hopefully, hopefully, in our next ancient city, we will find the ward armor trim and we will officially have every single new armor trim in Minecraft 1.20. If, uh, if you are enjoying the video, please leave a like and subscribe and comment something nice because uh, this video has taken over 200 Minecraft days so far. No, that's not an exaggeration. Every th single thing from Ancient Cities is like purple and dark and I don't know, I hate being colorblind because it's hard for me to tell what's what. Oh, please. Ugh. Just 
this chest have it? Oh! It does! Thanks! Ooh, let's get out of here before we celebrate. Alright, with that, it should be official. We have collected every new armor trim in Minecraft 1.20. Now we just have to craft more of them by using every single diamond I own and more, which is fine. But I'm really just curious to see what these guys look like. We're also going to build a little armory for them just to showcase each armor set. I think it'll look really cool. Okay, so we're back at our house and here is every single armor trim. Now looking at a crafting table here, if we type in armor trim, we have this middle block which allows us to turn one armor trim into two. This is what I meant when I mentioned that every armor trim has a specific item which can be used to make more of that armor trim. A lot of armor trims that come from the trail ruins use terracotta. Of course, the two armor trims associated with the end use different end stone blocks. And then things like vex and coast use cobblestone. So thankfully, I have all these blocks. It's just deep slate, you know, some end blocks, some sandstone, and terracotta. All blocks that are pretty easy to collect. The only thing I normally don't keep on hand is terracotta, but I've got so many ways. It's not too hard to get. So, I need to craft 38 more armor trim. And since each armor trim requires 7 diamonds, that means I need, uh, 266 diamonds? Something like that. Let's go through all of our chests and see how many diamonds we have because I, I have no idea. We have fortunately obtained some diamonds from raiding end cities, raiding ancient cities, and our time mining in this world, so I should have a decent amount, but... I don't think I have 266. Okay, so total, I need just over four stacks of diamonds. And right now we have just about two and a half stacks. So I guess it's time to find some more. Thankfully, we do have fortune three, so this shouldn't be too hard. Oh my gosh, leave me alone. Why is there so many mobs? Please, I just want diamonds. Is anyone else colorblind and every time they see glow like and they think it's diamond? Because I swear, every time I see a piece of glow like it, I get so excited because I think I finally struck gold. Well, struck metaphorical gold. Really, I, I think I struck diamonds. Come on, we only need two more. Oh, let me get this diamond. Don't kill me. Stay away from my diamond. Oh, okay. Please give me more than one. Oh, good. It's more than one. Oh, it's... Oh, my gosh. It's a lot. Oh, hello? That's a lot for one vein. One thing I don't like about the newest Caves and Cliffs update is that diamonds almost never spawn in veins anymore. Almost every single diamond I got was just one or two diamonds, usually one diamond by itself. Thankfully, Fortune 3 makes this a whole lot easier. All right, we're back at the house. All right, we've got all of our diamonds as well as the armor trims and all the blocks to craft more. So let's go ahead and do that. So can I just go like this and then... Now I have two, now I have three, now I have four, okay. So we'll do this one at a time until we have four of each. Well, here we have it. I really hate that we're only left with half a stack of diamonds because, man, those diamonds took a while to collect. But it'll all be worth it because now we have four of every single type of armor trim in the game. So here's the plan going forward. Somewhere around this area, we need to create a massive area to display and showcase all of these armor trims. What I'm thinking is a massive ancient Greece-themed building acting is almost like a museum displaying all of the new armors. And then I'm I'm going to make every armor set out of iron just because iron is obviously really easy to get and I like that iron has a nice neutral color which uh will show off all of the armor shapes and the designs we use very easily. The other option is netherite but it would be very very hard to get 16 sets of netherite armor. Okay you know what we'll do the <laughs> iron armor later. For now why don't we build our build. I think on top of this mountain would be a great location, so why don't we do some excavating so that we have a nice flat area to work with. Unfortunately, since I don't have the replay mod on this newest version yet, I, uh, I can't do a cool block breaking and building time lapse, but uh, we'll, we'll do our best to do a fun little montage. Okay, well, my shovel's almost broken, but thankfully it was able to keep up and we have a really nice large flat area for us to build this. So my idea is pretty much just to use a bunch of quartz that we have in our chests 
to build this thing and I think it should turn out to look really pretty. I don't know though, so I'm hoping for the best. All right, well, uh, I guess let's start with this. Okay, I think this is a nice starting place for a base. Not exactly sure how big I'll need this, but this is a good place for us to start. Okay, let's do this. Okay, I think that's enough armor stands. <laughs> So first, we have the base here. I made it entirely out of quartz bricks, and then I uh, used some deep slate as a nice contrast to act as the pillars for where we will display these armor stands. But I'm thinking instead of leaving these entirely deep slate, I might replace both blocks or the bottom blocks or do something to showcase each armor uniquely. For example, with the dune armor set, maybe I'll add some sandstone to represent that this came from a sandy region. Or with the eye armor set, maybe I'll use some end blocks to represent that it's from the end. I don't know, but I like this as a start for now. So before we actually make the armor, let's continue building our little thing here. I don't know what to call it. Okay, so finally, we have the build. If you keep up with the Twitch streams, it's actually almost the same exact build as on our Twitch world, which is the entrance to our storage room. But here, it's being used to house our armor stand. And I put some glass up top so we have a little bit of a light source so that this place isn't too dark. So now we can get ourselves our armor. Now, you can trim armor with the obvious ores like diamond, iron, gold, emerald. You can even do things like redstone, lapis, quartz, copper, and amethyst shards. So what I'm going to do is probably grab about a stack of each material, and then as we trim the armor, we can just see which seems to go best with which armor piece. I think that's a good idea. Wow, look how great that looks on top of the mountain. I think that is so cool. We'll have to build more of them scattered throughout here. Definitely a nice touch. All right, everyone. We we finally have it. This has taken a long time, but we finally have one of every single armor trim inside of Minecraft trimmed to our armor. Now, I tried to have a good diversity of amethyst trimmed armor, emerald, copper, diamond, quartz, whatever. I at least did one for each, but there were definitely a few that stuck out. Copper armor in particular has a really nice color compared with the iron, so does the amethyst, lapis, and emerald. Other colors like redstone, I'm not a huge fan of. So let's take our three shulker boxes full of armor, we will place them all on our armor stands, and then we can decide which one is my favorite. Now, I want you guys to let me know down in the comments below which armor trim is your favorite, and whichever armor trim gets the most likes or the most love will be my official armor trim for my netherite set of armor. I don't really know what to choose. So let's get them all placed on here. All right, first we have the ward armor set. Pretty good, but pretty basic. I don't like how the chest plate and helmet are a little darker in color than the leggings and boots, even though it's all trimmed with diamond. Next here, let's place Dune trimmed with gold, which Dune, I think looks really, really cool. I like the design on it. I basically like any armor trim that really adds a lot to the armor. Next, we have Vex, which I know is a lot of people's favorite armor, and, uh, oh, I didn't mean to put it on myself. There we go. Yeah, Vex looks really cool. I like the look it gives you right here in the middle. It's really unique. Here we have Razor, another fairly basic armor trim, but one that's still all right. Here is the rib armor trim, which I think looks really cool. It really adds a lot. It really gives you that rib to bone look that I think is pretty dang cool. Here I will add Coast, which is definitely ocean themed, and I like it. It's pretty basic, but the lapis with the iron especially I think is a good color combo. I'm gonna switch these two. I don't want two reddish looking ones right next to each other. Even though I'm colorblind, I'm still particular with my colors. Okay, here we have the eye armor trim, and what I like about trimming this one with emerald is it looks like there's an emerald right in the middle. It doesn't even look like an eye. Well, I guess it looks like an ender pearl or eye of ender, but this one is definitely one of my favorites. Here is the snout armor trim trimmed with netherite. I really had to limit how many suits I could trim with netherite because I don't have a lot of it. But regardless, I think snout is still a fun one. It doesn't really add enough to the helmet, though. I think it could use a bit more. All right, here is Wayfinder trimmed with gold, which is all right, but again, another pretty basic one. I think it looks decent, not my favorite. I want to preface that I don't think any of these look bad, just some are definitely better than the others. Here is the Spire armor trim, and I trimmed this one with quartz. I at least wanted to do one with quartz, but with the iron, you can't really tell. 
Regardless, I don't think it really adds too much, but it still looks pretty cool. I like the little halo we have around the helmet. Ah, here we have Silence, which is the most rare armor trim by far, and I definitely see why. All of the armor trims adds a small trim on top of the base armor, whereas Silence, I think since it's so rare, adds, well, it pretty much changes the entire armor, but definitely looks really, really sick. Here is Shaper, another pretty basic one, but again, doesn't look bad. Here is Sentry from Pillager Outposts, which I think is alright. I don't like how it literally feels like I'm putting a target on myself by wearing this one. Definitely not going to use that one in PvP. Here is the Wild Armor Trim, trimmed in green. I think this one's alright. I don't have many opinions about- oh, wrong helmet. Anyways, as I was saying, I don't have many opinions about this one. Again, it's pretty basic. Here is the Tide Armor Trim, another water-themed one, which I think is pretty cool. I know this is a lot of people's favorites. And I like the design with it, it's pretty nice. Last but not least, we have the host armor trim trimmed with redstone, which is pretty cool. And here we officially have it, every single armor trim in Minecraft. You know what I have to do? I'm sorry, Vex, it's nothing personal. Oh gosh, you can set armor stance on fire? Well, I just broke the armor stand, I gotta get another one. But anyways, I want to move Silence to the front, just because Silence was so hard for me to get. Well, honestly, Silence was easier than Ward, but Silence is by far the rarest one, so I've got to flex with it a little bit, you know what I mean? So Silence is staying up front, and Vex can go to the back. Ah, that looks much better. I'm so happy how this turned out. If I stand like this with the FOV down, we have every armor trim before us in Minecraft. Now, what I think will make this area look even better is if in the background all around here, we had some of the new cherry blossom trees as well as some spore blossoms to add some cool particle effects. So how about we fly to the new cherry blossom biome and collect some saplings that we can grow around here. Is that it? Oh, I think here it is. We have the cherry grove biome. Now I'm not sure what blocks can I collect without silk touch. So these pink petals, okay, I can collect these petals without silk touch. We're gonna collect a lot of these. I really love the petals because you can place them like sea cucumbers. We can have one, two, three, or four, and you can vary them up around here and add some variants. Wow, that's such a nice noise. I could listen to ch Cherry Blossom ASMR all day. Now, what is nice is if you look at the leaves here, we have these particle effects just from the Cherry Blossom leaves. These pink particles combined with the green particles from Spore Blossoms can create a really magical garden effect. Yes, give me all the saplings. Hello, baby. Okay, I think 27 saplings should be enough. Actually, you know what? I want a few more, just in case I want some more in the future, because these trees are so dang pretty. I will admit, I don't think this update's perfect. I definitely dislike how I feel like it doesn't add much to the update, and as beautiful as this biome is, it is kind of simple. All it does is literally adds a new wood type, a new leaf type, and some new flowers. That's it. It definitely is very pretty, but I feel like it's a little basic. Okay, here we are. Let's try it out. So first, if I place a petal, can you bone meal these? Oh, you can. Okay, cool. This. Nice. Look how pretty these are. Now, these definitely look great, but I think we definitely need a little bit of variance in here. I think these trees by itself doesn't quite cut it. It's a bit too pink in here. But I definitely wanted this to be a 1.20 themed build, so I'm using a lot of these blocks intentionally. I mean, heck, it's a new update. I have to use some of these new items. They're so pretty. Okay, let's change this area up a little bit. That's better. Basically, all I wanted to do was add some spore blossoms for some more particle effects and some dark oak trees in the background because I think they're a nice contrast and they look pretty pretty. So there we go, this looks absolutely magnificent on top of this mountain here, and I love this little monument. I definitely have to build more places like this because just look at that. It looks so tranquil and pretty. Cherry Blossom Trees are definitely a game changer here, and I'm so excited that they're finally in the game. I don't know, I think Silence might be my favorite. I should have crafted more because now I'm out and I don't have anything to trim my armor with. I messed up. Literally, I should have made one extra of each of these armor trims just in case, but I don't have a single one, so uh, we're gonna need to find some more in the future. But there we go, we have officially collected every single armor trim in Hardcore Minecraft in 1.20. So that is all for today's eventful video, my friends. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and all that good stuff. As we say goodbye to our beautiful temple in the background, I hope to see you all in the next video. My name is Jay Wisp, and I hope you all have a great day.